the sea hound. Network presents The Adventures of the Sea Hound with Captain Silver and Jerry. As the wily Commodore Boom Boom eluded our Sea Hound friends again, yesterday we heard how Tex and Kukai, pursuing him in the Spray Hound, the ship's launch, were forced to abandon the chase because their gasoline supply was exhausted. Captain Silver and Jerry, with Alf, the cockney sailor, picked them up in the Sea Hound and started back for Iquique, still hoping that swift Chilean battleships converging on the scene might yet capture Boom Boom and Eco, the Jap wrestler. Well, now it's nearly three o'clock in the morning, and the scene is again Iquique Harbor. With her tanks replenished from the Sea Hound stores, the launch lies alongside the big catch as it's ready to start for shore. Jerry, Tex, and Alf are on board, and there's Captain Silver just appearing up the companionway. He runs across the deck and leaps onto the spray hound. Ah, ah, all right. Go ahead, Tex. Did you call Sandy and Quake there, Captain Silver? Uh, what do you have to say? Oh, just a moment, Jerry. Wait till I get settled here. Ah, there. Well, now, here's the latest communique right from the firing line. Warships have reached the position given them by Tex, and they're coning the seas in a southwesterly direction. Well, golly, we knew that. Have they sighted Boom Boom? No, no, not yet, Jerry. Oh, gee. Don't be so impatient. They've got a difficult job trying to run down a small boat that has the whole southern Pacific to hide in. That's right, Hill. Why, they were swinging those searchlights all around us, not one of them sighted who guy or me. Yeah, Tex, but we knew that an hour ago that they reached the spot where you were. And still I haven't found Boom Boom. Don't forget, Hill. In an hour, Boom Boom could have traveled 40 or 50 miles. That aircraft they hidden was fast. Just as fast as a spray on well, let's not give up hope just yet, Jerry. Golly, if he gets away again... Then he'll have to be found again, that's all. Tex. Ah, uh, yes, Captain Silver? As soon as you put Alf and me ashore, I want you and Jerry to go back to the ship and turn in. It's almost three o'clock in the morning. You going to stay ashore, Captain? Yes, yes, I am, Tex. I'm going up to St. Equestus and keep in touch with the chase after Boom Boom. Oh, Jiminy Crickets, can't I go, Captain Silver? At three o'clock in the morning? Oh, 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 oh no, Jerry. No, I want you to go back to the Zion and get what sleep you can. It's too late for you to be up. I'll see that he hits his bunk, Captain. Oh, I'm going to use some more shut eye myself. That there spell I had riding back to the harbor here weren't no more than that. <laughs> I'm still rocking a little. <laughs> well, next time you'll remember to watch the gas tank. I'm going to load this critter up to our scupper first thing in the morning, Captain Silver. And say, matey. Yeah? I know there's a place that can get petrol the old blooming night. Where? Right next to where my ship is docked and loading. I'll take you there if you like. Sure, sure. And then we can drop you right alongside your ship. Uh, which way is it? Just beyond Laino Wharf. Eh? Oh, that's easy. We'll put Captain Silver ashore and then we'll take you around there. Thanks, matey. Now I'll show you where you can get the petrol. Uh, so, Ronnie, what a night it's been. I bet you never expected to go to sea again tonight, Alf, did you? <laughs> then I didn't, matey. I'm only sorry we didn't catch the bloke. That eco man. He turned out to be a one, didn't he? Well, you've been a big help to us tonight, Alf. And a big help to the war, too. Hey? I mean by linking up Boom Boom and Walman. It's Walman, undoubtedly, who has been tipping off Boom Boom about ship sailings out of Iquique. Right, me pink. Maybe I saved me own nick. Maybe the Blighty would have attacked us when we sailed. Uh, where are you sailing, Alf? Uh, in a day or two. She's loading now. Captain Silver. Yes, Jerry? Did Senor Cuesta say anything about Waldman when you talked to him? Did they catch him? No, he didn't say anything, Jerry. And I clean forgot to ask him. I was far too interested in hearing the latest about Boom Boom. Oh, they've probably picked Waldman up by now. PK is not a very big place. Please know every corner of it. Who is this tall Waldman, anyhow? And why were they all so surprised when I said I'd seen him with Eco and the bloke what tried to shoot you, Captain Silver? Why, he's an insurance man here in Iquique, Alf. Marine insurance. That means he insures ships and the cargoes on ships. Yes, yes, I know. An ideal spot for anyone who wanted to keep a raider informed about ship sailings. 
probably knew about nearly every ship that came into the harbor here. And his work made it easy to find out about the rest. Here we are, Captain. Oh, fine, Dex. Don't bother to tie up. Just pull alongside the wharf. I'll manage to climb up. Aye, aye, sir. After you drop Al at his ship, you and Tex go back to the sea on turn in, Jerry. Yes, sir. But how do you get back on board? Oh, Senior Quaster can always get me lunch. Well, I'll say good night, Al. Good night, Captain. Oh, I'm pleased to have met you. Come aboard whenever you like, as long as you're here. <laughs> Thank you, sir. All right, Captain. You can make it now, I think. All right, thanks, Tex. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Be on board. Good night, Captain. Good night, Captain Silver. Uh, which way now, Al? Out to the end of the dock, matey, and turn to port. We ain't far. Okay. Uh, sit up here, Al. There's plenty of room. Uh, thank you, matey. Thank you. Here, here. Drop right down. Ah, thanks. So you don't know just when your ship is sailing, huh? Uh, we're not day or two, the mate says. Won't be long. They're loading in there. Yeah, what's your cargo, partner? Yes, I don't know. Huh? When we're in port, all I do is sleep aboard it. I don't pay no mind to what they're loading or unloading. Well, uh, where are you going when you leave here, Al? No, I don't know that either. They uh, don't usually tell us till we will out to sea, and sometimes not even then. However, the wireless operator aboard is my friend, and he says he's heard rumors we are for home this trip. For home? England, matey. That's home to me. It'll be the first time in two and a half years. Hope I get time to run up to London and see my old woman. Mm. Uh, this way now, Al? That's right, matey. The Larita's just beyond the wall. What's the name of your ship, Al? The Larita. It's a Spanish name. Oh, She's owned off and off by some port here in Iquique and the British line. You'll see her in a bit. You see where those lights are shining beyond the edge of the dock? Uh Uh-huh. And that's where she's moored. You'll see her now. Wait a bit. Oh, blimey. What's the matter? They're still loading her. They must have been working all night. Hey. That's or some kind of loading. Lummy. We'll be putting out soon or my name ain't Smithers. That's why they've been working all night, I think. We are due out soon. Uh, where do you want me to put you ashore? Well, there's a nice place just beyond the ship. You cut across her bow and turn in. And the petrol place is right there, too. Okay. I wonder what kind of ore that is they're loading. Uh, I don't know, matey. Uh, what do you think it is, Tex? Oh, I'm turning the line on you. Would it be, uh, copper, you think? I've always heard they load a great deal of copper in it. Copper? Why, sure, that's what it is. Copper ore. Silly sends out a raft of it. Captain Silver told me. Hey, look over there, matey. You see? Huh? Hey, you can put me ashore right there, where you see that landing stage. And your petrol place is right there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you better cut the motor, Tex. Yeah. Well, I guess it's all ashore that's going ashore. I'll say good night now, mate. So you needn't wait at the landing stage. Uh, Good night, Jerry. Good night, Al. Gee, I'm glad we bumped into you. I'm glad to have met you, too. Good night, Taylor. Good night, Al. I hope you have better luck the next time you meet Zeke, Cal. Yes, I hope it is that there'll be a next time. If when he tries that home in the eye business again, I'll smack him down. Just like Captain Silver does. If we ever meet him again, we'll turn him over to the police. Who's that? Ah, somebody there on shore. Yeah, well, I knows him. He's a mate of mine on the Larita. Ahoy! Max Sweeney! Ahoy! Get ashore, man! Gee, sounds like he wants you on shore. Well, I'll soon be there. No, I'll go for it and make us fast. Ah, uh, don't think of it, matey. I can offer shore. I'll go for it. You just nose her up to the landing stage and I'll off all. Well, hope I see you. Good night. All right, Al. Good night, Al. Smooth sailing. Thank you, matey. Alfie, where have you been? Actually, me, you've been looking everywhere for you. Hello, Max Sweeney. I've been having a bit of a joyride. Oh, oh. And who might your friends be in the elegant launch? They're from that beautiful catch in the arbor, the Sea Anne. Oh, you mean the private yacht? Oh, consorting with the idle rich, are you? 
You know that we almost sailed without you? Sailed without me? Why, they're still loading. The last load, they'll load this trip. We're sailing in three hours, perhaps two. And every mother's son of us is due aboard immediately, if not sooner. All right, mate. Hey, right now, tell me. Did you have a good time aboard that yacht? Did they wine you and dine you? <laughs> wine and dine me. Feel that damn for me. Huh? They sailed me 50 miles out to sea. Oh, did they now? <laughs> Perhaps you'll be after telling me why. Yeah, let's have a bit of a wit, and then I'll tell you the whole story. Well, Barracks is after waiting for us at the wine shop up the street of it. Come along. Now, which pub is it? Yeah, here, this way, this way. They'll be after starting your story. How did they like to see you get aboard that private yacht? Well, I'll tell you how it happened. And it's gospel, matey. It's gospel. I happened into the wrestler tonight. You mean the man that threw McGovern? The same. Oh, shoot, the whole waterfront is talking and nothing else. Well, as I say, I happened in there. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, Hey, 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 where are you going after? Let me go, let me go. Where, where are you going? I want to get a look at that chap across the square. Hey, where? I don't see anyone. Like a one to let me go. Come here. No, he's turned down that alley and I'll never find him. He's a crazy ass. Who is the lad? He looks like a cove named Waldman. Huh? The Bobby's wanting. Waldman, Waldman. Who's he? He's a spy. That's what he is. What? Yeah, you know, I've got to tell my pals. Let, let me go. You, no, you, no, you don't. Come on now. Oh, oh come so on. So they let me didn't go. wane you and dane you, eh? Oh, well, you're as drunk as a lord, Alfred. Oh, I ain't. Boy. Let me go. Let come me here, go. you. No, you don't. No, you don't. Spy. Somebody named Wardman. Why, you're oh, drunk, Come Alfred. off it. Let me go. Yeah, you'll come along with me now. Between Sparks and myself, maybe we can sober you up enough to get you aboard. No, 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 no. Come on, come on, come no, on. I won't. Come. No, no. Come on, let me go. Did Alf, the Cockney sailor, really see Senor Waldman lurking about the waterfront? But that means the Kike police have so far failed to find him. And what is his business near the freighter being loaded with a cargo of copper ore? There's more excitement coming, so maybe you'd better tune in tomorrow for the further Adventures of the Sea Hound. Until tomorrow, then, as Captain Silver says, move sailing. <laughs> the Adventures of the Sea Hound are written by Frank Dom. The director is Cyril Armbrister. And the program comes to you from New York. There's a job for you in Navy Blue, and it's a mighty important job. To release fighting sailors for active combat duty, thousands of women are urgently needed now in the waves. They are needed to perform behind-the-line tasks like map making, camouflaging, parachute rigging, aircraft instrument maintenance, and many other jobs that must be done to win this war. The pay is excellent, and attractive uniforms are provided without charge. Specialist schools will train you for jobs that may lead to interesting careers after the war. Any American woman between the ages of 20 and 36 with at least two years of high school and with no children under 18, is eligible for enlistment. Apply today at your nearest Navy recruiting station or Office of Naval Procurement. The illustrated booklet, The Story of You in the Navy, will give you the complete story of service in this branch of the Navy. Write to The Wave, Washington, 25, D.C., and ask for a copy. This is the Blue Network. <laughs>